this is a review video addressing alternation of generations, which is a life cycle in which an organism has both haploid and diploid multicellular stages. And alternation of generations tends to be a confusing topic for many people because there is a lot of terminology involved and it's a cycle. So you're looking at the change from the haploid stage to the diploid stage and back again. And the biggest challenge is to figure out a good way to associate the different life stages with um, whether they're haploid or diploid and whether they go through mitosis or meiosis to reach the next phase in the cycle. So this video is designed to help go through some of that terminology, follow the general pattern of alternation of generations, and then we'll look at an example in a real world organism and hopefully that will help to clear up any confusion about this particular topic. Alternation of generations is seen in most plants and also in some members of the red algae and also some members of the brown algae. So this is a life cycle where an organism has a haploid multicellular stage and a diploid multicellular stage. Remember, haploid refers to one set of chromosomes and diploid refers to two sets of chromosomes. So we'll take a look at both of those stages. In alternation of generations, you have a gametophyte phase and a sporophyte phase. To break down that terminology a little bit, anytime you see phyte, that is just a term that means plant or plant-like. So think of a gametophyte as a gamete producing plant stage. Um, and the gametophyte, all of the tissue that makes up the gametophyte is haploid. So all of the cells in the gametophyte have one set of chromosomes. The gametophyte produces the gametes, and those gametes are also going to be haploid. And these are going to be produced through mitosis. So think haploid has to give rise to haploid. And the only way to make cells that are identical to the parent cells is through um, mitosis. When you have haploid gametes, you make sperm cells and egg cells. Those gametes are going to fuse to form a diploid zygote, just like we see in animal reproduction. The zygote then divides through mitosis to develop into the sporophyte, which is a diploid structure. So the diploid sporophyte grows from the single celled diploid zygote that is the result of the combination of two haploid gametes. Once the diploid sporophyte has matured, it's going to produce haploid spores. But remember, the sporophyte is diploid. So in order to produce haploid spores, the sporophyte is going to undergo meiosis or reductional cell division in order to contain half of the genetic material that the parent cell possessed. So this is a nice figure that comes from the OpenStax Biology textbook that is a good representation of sort of a simplified version of alternation of generations. So it goes in a circle, which is nice because we're talking about a life cycle. So we can start at either phase. You can either start at the gametophyte phase and move through this direction to sporophyte, or you can start at sporophyte and move through in this direction to gametophyte. So let's start with the haploid gametophyte. This is also a nice representation because you are reminded that you're talking about haploid tissue anytime you're in the yellow box um, where the gametophyte is, and you're talking about diploid tissue anytime you're in the green box where the sporophyte is. So if we take it from the first uh, phase, let's take it from gametophyte phase, we'll start here. The gametophyte, remember, is haploid. So you've got a multicellular haploid gametophyte that is going to be producing gametes. So you're making sperm and you're making eggs. So because this is a haploid parent and is giving rise to haploid gametes, you only have to do that through mitosis. So mitosis produces haploid gametes. Sperm cells and egg cells are gametes. Two of those are going to fuse here. And that fusion is going to result in our zygote, which is a single-celled first step in the 
diploid sporophyte phase. So you have fusion of haploid gametes leading to a diploid zygote. Now we're in the green box, so we're talking about tissue that is diploid or 2N. So you have your diploid zygote that's going to just grow. And when we think about a multicellular organism, diploid organism that comes from a diploid zygote, we're just talking about mitosis because we're talking about cell division that is producing cells with an identical chromosome number to the parent cell. So you just have simple mitosis for growth into the adult sporophyte. Once your sporophyte is mature, remember it is a diploid uh, sporophyte, and we're going to try to produce spores. So much like a gametophyte is a gamete producing plant, the sporophyte is a spore producing plant. So let's go through um, the next phase, which is going to be meiosis. So the adult sporophyte, the mature sporophyte, is going to produce spores, but the spores are on the yellow side of the line. So remember, these are gonna be haploid spores. So in order for a diploid sporophyte to produce haploid spores, that sporophyte is gonna to have to undergo meiosis to reduce the chromosome number from diploid to haploid once again. Now once those spores are formed, they're released when they land in a habitat with the proper conditions, they will germinate, they will give rise to a brand new gametophyte um, and grow into the adult phase of the gametophyte through mitosis. Because remember, these are haploid spores. They're going to grow into a haploid gametophyte. So the type of cell division that you're undergoing is going to be mitosis. And the cycle continues from there. Let's look at an example from an organism that you may be familiar with, a fern. So when you're looking at the top side of a fern leaf, as shown in this picture, there's not a whole lot to be seen as far as reproductive structures. You are, however, looking at the sporophyte phase of the fern when you're looking at the typical sort of fern frond-like leaves that you see growing in the woods. If you flip over a fern frond that is in its reproductive stage, you'll see something that looks like this here in figure A. These individual little brown spots here, these are called sori, and sori are just collections of uh, spores being produced on the underside of the leaf. So because these sporophytes are forming on the underside of these leaves, we can tell that the leaves are the sporophyte phase of the fern. When the spores are released from these sori and they germinate in the soil, they're going to grow into gametophytes, which are, remember, haploid. So this structure here is the haploid gametophyte. This is the little young fern gametophyte that grows through mitosis from the germination of a haploid spore that was produced by the mature sporophyte or the fern uh, leaves that we're familiar with. You can also see in this figure this little piece right here, which is the new sporophyte. So the sporophyte is growing out of the gametophyte. So gametophytes are producing gametes, sperm cells and egg cells. Fertilization is going to occur in the female um, gametophyte structures. So sperm is going to travel to the egg. When fertilization happens, then you get a new diploid zygote. And that diploid zygote is going to divide through mitosis to give rise to the new diploid sporophyte. In ferns, the gametophyte phase is very, very small. And the sporophyte grows directly out of the gametophyte and will give rise to the adult fern um, sporophyte phase that we are familiar with. So we can take a look at this diagram, which is similar to our first sort of simplified diagram of alternation of generations, only now we're talking about a specific organism. So again, we see the same labels, um, green for sporophyte, which remember is diploid, and yellow for gametophyte, which again is haploid, and this figure, which also comes from your OpenStax biology textbook, um, is labeled here for you as well. Your haploid phases on this side of the box and your diploid on the top of the box. 
which is flipped from the original graphic that we looked at. So don't let that be a point of confusion for you. So again, it's a cycle, it's the life cycle, so we can start at any point in the cycle. But let's begin with the sporophyte, since this is our familiar fern leaf. Remember on the, other, on the underside of the fern leaf, which is the sporophyte phase, you find the sporangia, which are just the spore-forming structures um, housed in those sori underneath the fern leaf. Within those sporangia, you are producing spores, and spores are haploid, so in order to make haploid spores, see they're down here in the haploid box, in order to make haploid spores from diploid uh, sporophyte tissue, that individual is going to undergo meiosis at this point in the cycle. The spores that are produced through meiosis can germinate if conditions are favorable. After germination, that brand new um, gametophyte is going to undergo mitosis to grow into the full-fledged gametophyte phase, which we see here. So this should look familiar from the previous slide. The gametophyte is going to be producing sperm cells in uh, structures called antheridia and egg cells in structures called archegonia. And antheridia and archegonia are just the gametophyte um, gamete producing structures found on the gametophyte. So you've got male gametes and you've got female gametes. So fertilization is going to occur at the location of the female gamete. So the sperm will actually travel to the egg inside of the archegonium. From that point, that uh, fertilization event will give rise to a diploid zygote. So we're back on the diploid side of the graphic. That diploid zygote is going to grow. It's going to divide through mitosis to give rise to the mature diploid sporophyte phase, which again will produce sporangia, which will make spores through meiosis that will germinate, form gametophytes that then make gametes through mitosis from haploid gamete tissue or haploid gametophyte tissue to haploid gametes. And from there, that fertilization results in the diploid zygote, which will undergo mitosis to become a sporophyte again, and the cycle continues. It is interesting to note that different plants are going to do alternation of dip generations differently. So in our fern example, it was very clear that there are two separate phases, the sporophyte phase and the gametophyte phase. Even though the gametophyte phase is a lot smaller, it's still clearly a separate stage from the sporophyte stage. So here are a couple other examples that are just a little bit different. So this picture on the left from figure 25.3 in the OpenStax textbook is a type of moss. And mosses are interesting because the gametophyte tissue is actually the dominant phase. So when you're looking at a moss, um, when you're walking in the woods or on the edge of the water and you look down and you see the nice soft green moss under your feet, um, that is the gametophyte tissue. The sporophyte phase is actually this little structure that's growing up on a stalk here. The sporangium is at the end there. That's where the spores are being produced. Each one of these sporangia is up on a little stalk producing spores. So for something like a moss where the gametophyte tissue is actually the dominant phase, that is a non-vascular plant. That plant is not going to get very tall. So it's growing these sporophytes, these sporangia up on stalks. The advantage to doing that is to actually elevate the spores a little bit above the gametophyte tissue before the spores are released, before they're dispersed. So although it doesn't seem like these sporophytes are growing particularly tall, it is higher with relation to the gametophyte tissue below that it's growing out of. So that's one way of doing things. Um, in contrast with both the moss, where the gametophyte is dominant, and the fern, where both the gametophyte and the sporophyte are visible stages, um, in higher plants or more derived plants like angiosperms, like our rhododendron in this picture on the right-hand side, the sporophyte phase is actually dominant, and the gametophyte phase 
is reduced to just a few cells and is retained inside the sexual organs of the flowers. The female gametophyte um, in angiosperms develops inside of the ovules and the male gametophyte um, which is the pollen grain develops inside of the anthers. So you never really see the gametophyte phase uh, separate from the sporophyte phase and still the same pattern of alternation of generations is happening in all of these groups of plants.